Hey guys, with AI and inequality rising, it's kind of a good question what's going to happen to education in the future. There's a lot of national well-known figures that are funneling a lot of money into our states to push and lobby for legislation like this. And I don't know if our community or if our state really knows how much money is going into lobbying for this. You can go back and check the campaign filings and just the astronomical amount of money that came in in that race and that we're seeing in this race here in 2024. It's, uh, it's really alarming. This spring, after an aggressive lobbying effort backed by billionaires, Nebraska became one of the latest states to pass a school privatization program. Here's have passed a bill to give tax dollars for private education. LB 1402 would earmark funds directly into the state budget for private school scholarships. The state gives families taxpayer money in the form of vouchers, which funnel money away from public education. School vouchers are essentially a public way to finance private education, be that religious education, private schools, or sometimes homeschooling. We've seen other states who have drastically cut funding for their public education and the disarray that that's caused. Schools literally not being able to open on time, teachers not getting paid, they weren't able to get books for their students. The lawmakers in Nebraska knew it wouldn't be popular. It passed by only one vote and on the last day of the legislative session. But they went ahead anyway, sparking mass outrage in the state. Now people are fighting back with a valid initiative to... Yeah, but this essentially means that most people are gonna receive worse education because the top 10% has like 90% of the money with top 1% having the, the most. So, yeah. It just means that most people are going to be less and less educated. ...to repeal the school voucher program. We went to Nebraska to find out how a couple of billionaires engineered a legislative coup to defund public schools, and whether working-class Nebraskans can win an almost improbable victory to save public education in a deep red state. The battle began in 2023 with an innocuous sounding bill called LB 753. What that essentially did was it created tax credits that individuals who donated money to organizations that granted scholarships to private schools could claim on their income taxes annually. When the governor came in actually for the hearing on LB 753, he said, this is just the first step. And so it was pretty blatant that that was the direction that they were going. We successfully gathered enough signatures to put that bill on the ballot and to let voters decide like, hey, do you want your public dollars to go to private schools? And what we found across the state um, in rural Nebraska and urban Nebraska was that people are not for this bill. After the initiative, I mean, you. This is just damn obvious. Why, 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 why would you do this? What's the point? W what is their interest in this? Hmm? To repeal the scholarship tax break program, qualified for the ballot, conservatives up the ante and dropped off the tax. The person who brought that bill, Senator Minahan, brought a second bill in my second session. The second bill, LB 1402, was introduced a year later. It did away with the donation system and set up a typical voucher program, canceling the initial initiative. She said on the floor of the legislature, the purpose of that bill was to circumvent that referendum process uh, and to sort of bypass the will of the people, who at that point had very clearly stated they wanted this on the ballot because they didn't want public dollars going to private education. It wasn't so much that we had to do it again. It was the fact that our legislators knew that the state wanted to support public education and they passed it anyway. Why were so many Nebraska legislators so eager to override democracy and the wishes of their constituents? This may shock you, but has a lot to do with money. During my election cycle, which was 2022, we saw a huge influx of money to the Nebraska Federation for Children. And the Nebraska Federation for Children is just the local chapter of the DeVos-funded American Federation for Children. Betsy DeVos, Donald Trump's Secretary of Education, is the nation's leading advocate for school privatization. Her group gave $800,000 to pliant state legislative candidates in Nebraska, where campaigns have never gotten that expensive. DeVos also had ties to State Senator Luann Linehan, who tirelessly pursued these bills. I think it's of note that her daughter actually was working with the Nebraska Federation for Children, and now I think is also working with one of the scholarship granting organizations that's gonna hypothetically be receiving this money if it's not overturned on the ballot. This is a story playing out across the country. DeVos's group's PAC has spent nearly $10 million to elect pro-voucher candidates nationwide this year alone. And the money is coming from conservative billionaires like DeVos, Richard Uline, and Jeff Yass. Remember him? The left came up with this idea of income inequality. It's like, what are you talking about? It's just the opposite. In Nebraska, the billionaire family of former governor and current senator Pete Ricketts has also contributed big time to the voucher effort. Family scion Joe Ricketts also just so happens to own a bunch of private schools. The bulk, if not almost all, of the private schools are religious affiliated. They're not secular private schools. So we don't currently have a network hmm. of charter schools or secular schools that have popped up like there are in other states. But absolutely, individuals who have the amount of money, like the Ricketts family, who could invest in those kind of institutions are the ones who stand to make money off of that. So why are parents and citizens so against the voucher scheme? There are a lot of reasons, starting with the fact that they're a disaster. In the last few years, states, including Florida, Iowa, Indiana, North Carolina, Arkansas, and Georgia have all passed laws expanding vouchers. Supporters claim all kinds of things, that the aid is targeted at underprivileged students, that students tend to perform better, that the schools are more stable, that it's more financially responsible, but there isn't clear evidence for any of that. We have yet to see any study that shows that school vouchers are really moving the needle in terms of student achievement. In fact, the studies on vouchers show that students tend to achieve less going into voucher programs. So it's been in effect now in enough places for a long enough period of time that we have some pretty empirical data to say it's not going to help anybody. In Indiana, the average voucher recipient's family makes nearly six figures. In Milwaukee, home to the first modern voucher program, more than 40% of private schools receiving public money failed and closed up shop. States are proposing and- That's very interesting. So you're paying a premium just to get uh, an inferior education? Hmm. And I mean, obviously they are kind of targeting religious people. 
passing these voucher programs at frankly unprecedented rates in the last few years in a way that I think can be hugely damaging for public education. Again and again, vouchers have proved to be more costly than their backers let on. And when states privatizing public education face budget shortfalls, that almost always means less money for public schools and public services. I'm worried that the schools that are already struggling are going to struggle even more because they are just not going to be given or be allocated the funds that they could be because they're being shifted to funding a private entity. There are a large number of counties, not just cities, but counties in Nebraska that don't have private schools. So you're talking about aggregating a bunch of taxpayer dollars from areas that can't actually benefit from this and throwing it into a big pot of money that's going to then be distributed amongst private schools that they're not going to have access to. Only 20 I mean, the only way to really make sure that public education is excellent is to only have public education, right? And also a lot of people just want to get paid trying to do private education. <laughs> 21 of Nebraska's 93 counties have enough private schools to cover kindergarten through senior year of high school. So only a few communities would really have any chance to take advantage of the program. The impact on vouchers on rural communities can be particularly devastating because they have very few outside options. In a rural area, there will not be enough students to provide the conditions to create a second school. This isn't just an empty worry. Here's what's happening in rural Iowa. They wanted to go to a private school in 7th through 12th grade. Currently, they'd have to travel 65 miles from here. And that's one way. And even if kids have a private school nearby, the history of school vouchers and how the programs are still run have been all about limiting who can attend. This new legislation um, doesn't require that private schools have a non-discrimination clause. So they can pick and choose who they bring in, and they can also pick and choose who they kick out. And so they are not required to take students with special needs. They are not required to um, take students that might require additional para support or additional adult support in the classroom. Some schools do, but they are not required to staff a special education teacher. All these private schools, they have all this funding available to them, but are they going to be held to the same standards of accepting English language learner students? Like, I just put myself in that situation. The public schools have to provide um, all of that in our area. Private schools send kids to the public schools, and they reject them for either because they can't provide their services or because they don't want to provide them services without any accountability i mean that's the whole point of private schools to be a bit elitist you don't want the difficult students in your private school standards or metrics the fear is that nebraska will be handing out cash to all kinds of fly-by-night institutions and as an individual suppose you can afford to well as an individual who cannot uh, really change the system suppose what will you be thinking that you'll be sending your kid to even dumber public schools or private schools right suppose you can afford that We've seen grifters come in and start institutions in an effort to just skim money off the top and not actually help students. And if we see that same thing happen here in Nebraska, it's going to be horrible for our kids. Our community is pretty supportive of Catholic uh, schools and private education. And, and I heard even locally how at mass and uh, different Catholic churches, you would have fathers or priests really telling people not to vote or not to sign the petition. What? Petition to keep public dollars in public schools. Religious schools have been some of the biggest offenders in hoovering up money. Yeah, my take is that well, they have no, no business telling this to the to the people like even if you're religious i i don't think you should be listening to your priest about uh, politics from public schools in states where these programs have begun to operate as other states with vouchers have shown the programs quickly suck up taxpayer dollars and actively hurt education efforts in arizona for example i think they expected vouchers in the first year would be around 30 million and the second year around 60 million in actuality in that first year i want to say they were close to like 500 million and in the second year they ended up costing upwards of 700 million teachers are already underpaid we're already understaffed our teacher recruitment and training programs the numbers in our training programs are already going down we are struggling in nebraska not a lot of people have an opportunity to get a free education all over the world and just having that being instilled in me as a as a child growing up in this community in, in rural Nebraska was just something that I carried with me throughout my public school education, but also just growing up as a child of immigrants in America. When you look at the way the legislation is written, whoever runs these schools uh, would be able to take a certain amount of the money off the top. Yeah, but free education shouldn't equate bad education. I understand that schools can be flawed. L let's go with that. But still, there should be like good free schools. Uh, it's obvious that this is going to be a money-making endeavor for whoever tries to get involved in that. We've seen the same thing pop up in other states, where you see these strip mall schools pop up, uh, you know, with a bank of computers and really no actual certification, and that's incredibly problematic. Given how rapidly the budget for these grifts have expanded elsewhere, this November's ballot initiative to repeal the voucher. But also, this is terrible because suppose you attended uh, a grift for like a few years or a bad school for a few years, that can just really just ruin your life, right? Now you're a few years behind, or I mean, I guess the kid is a few years behind. So, yeah, that's gonna be a big problem. The voucher program is Nebraskans one real that could be just GG for life. Feel shot at avoiding these dire consequences. Grassroots activists are going to be severely outspent by the billionaire voucher advocates, but public school activists <laughs> in attempt to attempts to silence their voices, including a failed appeal to remove the measure from the ballot, has united locals. As a state, as a collective Nebraskan people, we really do value democracy. And um, I think it was kind of a slap in the face when our senators decided that they didn't care about that process and they passed it anyway. It just shows that they know that people are not in favor of this bill. They're scared to let voters decide on this matter. And I think right now it's just really motivating voters to get registered to vote, get in the know of what this bill means. Yeah, but what is your vote?